Working on an Ascent transfer clutch here today. So I have the back of a transmission apart. This is a CVT out of a 19 Ascent. Um, so I just wanted to show you some cool stuff that's back here because uh, most people don't ever really get to see it. Uh, right now I have the transfer clutch completely removed, so I'll show you that in a second. But what we have here is the pinion shaft. You can see when I turn this, the front wheels will spin. So that's connected to the front differential. Just kind of up in there. Um, and then the part that's missing right now, I'll show you where the interface is. Uh, this right here is part of the parking pole assembly. Uh, so when you put the car in park, which will come through this shift cable, which I have disconnected, remove this lever, which you can't see because it's dark. There we go. Remove this lever backwards. And when you do that, physically what will happen is uh, this little park rod, this middle guy right there, will pop outwards towards the camera. And when it does, there's a little cone shape on the end, which will move this arm up this way. So I'll show you how that works in a second when I put the uh, transfer clutch drum back in. All right, so here's my transfer clutch drum just kind of set back in here briefly. Uh, if we look on the side of it, there's a couple things you can see. Uh, the first is you can see the drive uh, gear in there where it connects to the pinion shaft. Uh, what that means is the innards of the transmission is always connected to uh, the pinion shaft, the front differential output, um, which means that these are front wheel drive bias. Uh, and what happens out here towards the rear wheels um, is controlled entirely by this clutch drum. I did want to show you also these gigantic lugs you see, this kind of really big looking gear. Uh, that is what the parking pole will uh, align to. So when you put it in park, can I see that maybe? When you put it in park, it's going to lock in on those big teeth and that's how it's in park. Um, actually, let me just show you real quick, see if I can do this without blowing everything apart. When we put it in park, it's gonna push. Sorry, it's loud in here today. Uh, it's gonna push this up like that. You can see the little cone shape in there. And now you can see it's interfacing on those lugs. And now we're locked in park. Now, critically, you might see here that when this is locked in park, this is locked in park. Our front wheels are locked in park. But, oops, and now it is going to try to fall apart. Uh, what's not locked in park is the output, the uh, rear wheel output here. So my rear wheels, even if I had this all back together, would still be able to free spin. And this is why people will tell you if you park on a hill or anything like that, uh, you want to put on your parking brake because your rear wheels aren't doing anything. So I just want to show you that real quick, and now I'll show you how the uh, kind of the guts here. All right, so here we have the. Um, the outgoing, the old uh, transfer clutch assembly. This is my new one. I'm going to keep them a little separate. Um, this is basically what is going on in there. Uh, we have the splines that meet up with the transmission part of the transmission. Uh, there's your pinion shaft gear, there's your parking pole, and then we have the transfer clutch drum itself. Uh, and so if I pull this out, this is the um, part that will couple onto the drive shaft, like so. And this sits in the back of the tail house of the transmission. It sits in there like so. So that would be what you'd see at the back of the transmission there. Really spinning. So the way that these work is basically the same as every other hydraulic clutch pack you'd see in any other conventional auto, auto transmission, which gets used all over the place. Um, but basically we have here a hydraulic port, which are two ports down there between the little white plastic rings. And then as uh, the transmission computer uses the, uh, the transfer clutch solenoid to apply hydraulic pressure to here, this inner part, which is a piston, is going to push upwards. And as it pushes upwards, it's gonna squish this stack of clutches all together. And so if you were to look at this, if I took it apart, all of these little brown ones with the brown teeth on there, those are a friction material, just like a, a manual transmission's clutch disc or like a brake disc kind of stuff, uh, or brake pad kind of material. And then in between them is a layer of steel. So this kind of gray one you can see here is a steel material. And normally when there's no pressure at all going on here, the clutch discs can just freely slide right past the steel and not have any problem at all. But when you apply that hydraulic pressure and it squishes this all together, now it's locked together like a a brake pad when you put the brakes on. Uh, it's gonna physically link these together. And so when that happens, put this back out. Put this back together-ish. 
Uh, lining these up with one hand is uh, difficult, let's say. Uh, but anyway, you kind of get the idea here. Um, that will link my output, or my input from the transmission to the output to, to the rear wheels. So the more that this applies pressure, the more linked my um, transmission and my rear wheels um, speeds become, and that will be basically how you do your all-wheel drive torque split. Uh, so that's how you get up to 50-50 distribution when they're fully, fully locked together. Half of the torque is going to the front wheels, half of it is going through this and out to the rear wheels. Uh, as far as why we're replacing this today, because I'm sure you're curious, if we look on here on the side of the teeth, you can see a good view. See there's all these little notches in there? All those little notches are where the edges of these drums, little clutch packs, have worn away either from heat or from uh, incorrect tolerance, sloppy fit, something like that. Um, I've worn those little ridges into the sides there. And so what will be caused by that uh, is when the transmission computer tries to release the pressure, um, which would be like when you're taking a really tight turn in a parking lot, uh, the solenoid will relax, the hydraulic fluid uh, pressure will relax, and the piston will retract. But all of those little teeth on the, uh, like these guys here, on the clutch disc, uh, will get stuck inside of those little grooves. And so it physically will still be locked together. Uh, it'll still be squishing itself together, uh, even though there's not, no hydraulic pressure pushing it together. And so the net result is um, when the car is trying to let there be a difference in wheel speed because you're making a sharp turn, it can't. And you get this kind of a juddery um, vibration when you're taking like parking lot speed turns. So that's why we're replacing this today. Subaru has a updated um, clutch drum here for addressing that concern. They changed, I think, some of the orientation and design of the clutch discs in there. Uh, and there's also a software update that changes some behavior in there as well. So, anyway, that's what we got going on. This is the kind of uh, guts of a transmission that most people don't ever get to see. So I thought I'd share it with you in case you found it interesting.